the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome to Kids Corner. I'm so glad you joined us today. We're going to have the beginning story from God's Word, the Bible. Now, some people say, I don't know how the world began. But the person that was there, God himself, he wrote an account. He was there. He told us what happened. Now, in the first verse, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So the first thing was the heavens and the earth. The earth was there. Now, the Bible tells us that this earth that he created was without form, and it was void. That means empty. And there was darkness everywhere on the face of the deep. And then God said, he said the first day, let there be light. And we know there was light. Now, was this light the light from the sun, the moon, and the stars where we get the light today that is on the earth? No, because the sun and the moon and the stars had not been created yet. And so this light was from God. Well, some people say, well, because there wasn't the sun and the moon and the stars, then it wasn't a 24-hour day. But you know what makes a 24-hour day? It's not the sun, moon, and the stars. It is how long it takes the earth to spend one time on its axis. So when God made the earth, the Bible tells us he hung it on nothing, and he spun it. And then he said, let there be light, and the light was himself. Now, you know, someday the Bible says the sun, moon, and stars are going to pass away, but there will still be light, and that light will be God himself. Now, God had a purpose for the earth. God wanted to make the earth so that creatures and man could live upon it. So, the Bible tells us, then the second day he says, well, I need to have air for them to breathe. So he divided the waters from the waters, the waters down below and the waters way up high. Some people still say that there's waters out in the universe. I don't know about that. But God says he divided the waters and he made nice, clean, fresh air to breathe. Well, then on day three, he says, well, they have to have somewhere to live. So he gathered up the waters into one place and he made the dry ground so that the creatures and the plants could live on the dry ground. And then God says, well, they're going to have to have something to eat. And, you know, I want to make it beautiful. And, oh, the thing that he created on day three, it makes our earth so beautiful. The Bible says that on day three, he made all the green things that grow, the plants and the flowers and the trees, all that make it so beautiful and so wonderful. So that was day three. Now on day four, this is where it becomes a little bit different than we would have thought it should be because it was on day four that God says, now I'm going to make the expanse of the heavens. I'm going to make the sun to rule by day, the moon to rule by night, and the stars for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So, you know, now light came. Now God had created the plants on day three. And we know that plants need the sun in order to make the food and to grow. And plants, the little seeds that God made, they are so incredible because what God did with these little plants and seeds has a very definite purpose. What they do is they take the soil, which animals don't eat and humans don't eat, but they take the soil, they take sunlight, they take water, and they make it into all these good things that we can eat. You know, the little teeny seed will take the black soil and, and the blue water and, and the bright sunlight and make something that's like an orange. Or they'll make something that's red, like a pomegranate. They'll make something that's all different colors, purple like a plum, all the beautiful, wonderful, different textures of the fruits, and then the, the, the grain and the weed and the vegetables and the carrots and, and the potatoes and all the things that we eat. It takes the nutrients out of the soil and makes them so that we can eat them, and then we can get the nutrients. That is what that little seed does that God created and made in all of the plants. It was amazing. You know, scientists today, they can take the seed apart and see what's inside of it. But you know what they cannot do? They cannot make a seed. It is the smallest manufacturing plant. A manufacturing plant, raw materials, something usable. 
this takes raw materials, water, sunlight, and soil, and produces all these wonderful things. And God did that on day three, and of course it needed sunlight, so on day four, he created the sun, moon, and stars. Now, you know, um, our scientists today are saying, well, there's just life on Earth because it's the right distance from the sun, and it's in such a way that, you know, there can be water and there can be air, and so therefore there might be life on other planets because it might be like the Earth. Do you know why there is life on the Earth? Not because of its distance from the sun. Now its distance from the sun is just perfect to sustain life because that's where God put it. And everything is perfect about the earth. But life is on the earth because God spoke it into existence. It wasn't because it just so happened to be in the right place. No, it was there first. And God then says, I'm going to prepare it so animals and man can live. So on the fourth day was the sun, moon, and stars. Well, and then we have the plants. Now we have the lights. And now on the fifth day, God says, all right, I'm going to start to inhabit the earth. And so he says, I'm going to put fishes of the sea and, and things. And the Bible says that the sea is teeming full of life. Do you know that if you take a little droplet of water and you put it under a microscope, you're going to see all these little living things in that droplet of water. They used to think that down low where the sun didn't get to in the bottom of the ocean, there wasn't anything living. Oh, no, they know there's all kinds of things down there that man has never, ever seen before that God put there. It's teeming. The oceans are teeming with life everywhere. And then he says, I'm going to make animals, birds that fly in the sky. Now, uh, the sky, though, is not teeming with life. You will see flocks of birds. You will see things that live in the sky. But sometimes you can go out and you don't even see a thing. So God says, no, in the, in the ocean it's going to be teeming with life, but in the sky I'm going to put the things that fly. So now he had the oceans full, he had things uh, in the sky, he had the grass, the signs and the seasons, the days and the years. Now he says, I'm going to make what I created this whole earth to have. But before he that, the Bible says he created all the animals, all the animals that live on land. He created on day six. But on day six, the Bible says he also made man. Now, in God creating the earth, do you know that he made all different kinds of life? No life is simple. But he made things that are a whole lot simpler than others. And, you know, he made, when he made the plants, he gave them only a body. They have a physical part to them. So plants have just a physical part, but they don't know anything of what is around them. And so after he made the plants, he says, I'm going to make something that have a consciousness to the world around them. And that is when he made the animals. Now, animals have different levels of consciousness. If you have a dog or a cat, you know, especially a dog, you know that that little puppy can be happy, he can be sad, he can show emotion. Some animals don't show any emotion ever at all. A lot of wild animals do not. And some do. Elephants, we know, they certainly do, don't they? And so, God says, I'm going to give them a soul. And a soul to these animals so that they can have a consciousness to what is around them. But after that then, God says, now I'm going to make something completely different. He says, I'm going to make a creature with life, but I'm going to put within him a different kind of life. The Bible says, God breathed into man and he became a living creature. Do you know that uh, God always was and always will be? But you had a beginning. When you were conceived in your mother's womb, that was the beginning of you. But you will never have an ending. Now some people say, oh, I'm not going to live forever. But you know what? They say, when I die, that's the end of me. But that's not true. God says that you will either have everlasting life and live forever with him, or you'll have everlasting death 
and death means separation. So forever you'll be separated from him. So you are going to exist somewhere forever. And on this earth, we're going to talk about it today. There is a decision, a choice that you can make because God says, I am giving man the chance to choose. That you can determine that you can have everlasting life with God in heaven. And you know, when God gave man that, it's called the spirit part of man. And with that spirit part of man, man can know and worship God. Have you ever seen an animal praying? Have you ever seen an animal saying, oh, thank you, Lord, thank you so much that you made me? No. Animals go on instinct. But you know, with man, God can talk to them. You can wake up in the morning and you can say, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Should I make this decision or should I make that decision? And the Lord will show you which decision you should make. If you lack wisdom, God says, I'll always answer that, that prayer. I will give you wisdom. We can talk to God. He made us in his image. We don't have everything that God has. God is everywhere. We're not. God knows everything. We don't. We have to learn. God sees everything. We don't. We only see what, what there, there, there is to see around us. And, and sometimes we miss a lot of that. But we're made in the image of God and the fact that we can commune with God. And so the Bible says that God then, and already we went over it, in the beginning, he made the heavens, and he made the earth. And we talked about the earth, how God made it for man to live in. And we also talked about how God made all of the stars, and he made the earth first, and then he made everything else. And of course, we already talked about the fact that then he made all these little things. And you know, remember how complicated three 30,000 little eyes a little dragonfly has, and that little dragonfly, it didn't need those 30,000. God did it because he is so fabulous and so wonderful. And I just wanted to remind you that on day six, God made all of the animals. And some people remember they think the dinosaurs were very old. Now they're fine. There's soft tissue in these dinosaurs because they weren't that old. They lived within six to 10,000 years. And so you know what? God made the entire world. And when God made the entire world, do you know what? He is your rightful ruler. He is the rightful ruler of the entire universe. He made it. He created it. He even holds it together. Did you know God holds it together? The Bible says that he does. And you know, when they study the little atom and how all those little positive charges are all together in the nucleus of an atom. They don't know how they hold together. They should be, you know, going against each other, but they're held together just because of God. And so on the sixth day of creation, God made what he had truly designed the earth for. He made man in his image. Well, he gave the very first man, his name was Adam, he gave him a job to do. Now, you know, some jobs can be so fun to do. And the job that he gave him was to name all the animals. Now, you know, some people think, wow, the first man that ever lived, he was like a caveman. Do you know what? Cavemen came after the Tower of Babel. When the languages were confounded, and they had different languages, different people group got together. Some of them went into southern France. It was too cold. They didn't have a chance to build something, so they went into caves. And there they drew these complicated pictures with paints that we can't even duplicate today that last longer than anything we even know about. And the caveman had to have come after Noah's flood because the flood was worldwide. The very first man that ever lived, Adam, he was so intelligent. Even to name all the animals, you know, my brother has a master's degree in civil engineering. And I grew up on a farm. And he had several cows that had calves. And so he named the calves. Do you know what he named the calves? Well, one of them was Brownie and one of them was Blackie. That wasn't very original. When I was older and I went home, my father had a new dog. And so I says, well, Dad, what did you name him? He says, I named him Dog, but that's spelled D-A-W-G. You know, I want to say that for Adam to have chosen names for all the animals, he was incredibly intelligent. 
And you know, the Bible tells us, though, that as he was naming all the animals, he all of a sudden realized something. Why, there was Mr. and Mrs. Elephant. And then when he found the lion, why, there was a Mr. Lion and a Mrs. Lioness. And then for the rhinoceros, why, there was a Mr. Rhinoceros and a Mrs. Rhinoceros. And for every single one of the elements, he found something that was like them, something that was similar. And as he was going around naming and seeing all the different animals, he was looking. Is there someone here like me? Am I going to find someone like myself? But as he looked all around and named all the animals, did he find anyone like himself? No, he didn't. Well, you know, the Bible tells us that God had a plan. So what God did was he put Adam to sleep. And then he took out of Adam's side one of his ribs. Now, some people think, oh, they took out Adam's rib. This was a long time ago. People thought that. And so men must have one less rib than women. Do you know the only bone of the human body that will grow back is the rib? But, you know, there weren't operations done for a very long time taking out ribs. So people didn't know that. So that rib grew back. So men have the same number of ribs that women have. But what God did from Adam's rib is created someone that was like Adam. It was a woman. And you know, the Bible says that when Adam woke up, that God brought this wonderful creature to him. And do you know that uh, there's a subject that more poetry, more songs, more stories have been written about than any other subject. You know what that subject is? That is the subject of love. And you know that the very first love song is right here in the Bible. The Bible tells us that when Adam saw this wonderful, beautiful creature that God had, I'm going to read it to you right here. He says, oh, this is now bone of my bone. Oh, she's bone of my bone. She's flesh of my flesh. She's like me. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to call her after me. I'm man. She shall be called woman. Oh, because she was taken out of man. Oh, he was so excited. And you know, when God brought her to Adam, that was the very first marriage. And God right there gave us the design for marriage. And that is one man is to marry one woman. And that's all. One man, one woman, and they then are together for life. And that's God's design. One man marries one woman. And oh, they had a wonderful time in the garden. <laughs> and you know their favorite time of the day? God himself would come down and walk and talk. You know, kids, if you knew that God was going to be somewhere and he would just talk to you, you would be there too, wouldn't you? You'd show up. Oh, that'd be so wonderful. That would be so exciting. Well, God would answer any of their questions. And oh, it was a wonderful time for them. Now, they lived in that beautiful garden. They think that there were probably thousands of trees in the garden, all good to eat. They would never be hungry. But God gave them one rule. And the one rule that he gave them was he said, now there's a tree in the garden. And the name of it is the tree of knowing, knowledge, knowing, the knowledge of good and evil, right and wrong, good and bad. Now, you know, kids, they knew God. They knew the beautiful garden. They had a wonderful relationship with each other, so they knew good. But you know what they did not know? They did not know evil at all. God says, I don't want you to know evil either. Do you know what God tells you to do? God says, I want you to put a guard up for your eyes and your heart. Do you know that there are pictures out there that pop up? If you, maybe you're on the Internet, and God says, don't look at them. Get rid of them. Don't watch them. There are things that people do and say in movies. God says, don't have any part of it. Even some of the video games are so violent, they are not right. God says, you guard. You know, kids, if I take something and put it in my mouth, you know, I digest it and it's gone. But if I put something in my brain, where's it going to go? There's no place for it to go. It stays there. And so the Bible says, I don't want you to know evil. God did not want Adam and Eve to know evil, and God does not want you to know evil. 
Don't even find out about him. Don't even do anything. God does not want you to know evil at all. But you know what? The Bible tells us that God had an enemy. God had created the angels in heaven. And God created one angel that was more beautiful than any of the others. His name was Lucifer, son of the morning star. Now, there's just something about beauty that many times makes a person very prideful. Because why are you, if you are, more beautiful than someone else? God made you that way. And you know what? The Bible tells us that God had made Lucifer more beautiful than all of the others. And do you know that while God was creating the earth and the heavens and everything, do you know what the angels were doing? Because they had already been created. The Bible says they were, oh, oh, they were clapping their hands in amazement. God spoke and all these things came in, into being. It was so fabulous and so wonderful. Well, then, I don't know if this is what happened. The Bible doesn't tell us for sure. But when he created man, and then this beautiful Satan realized that man was going to be above him because we were created in the image of God, maybe he became jealous. He thought, well, no, no, I, I was here first. It should be me. We don't know what he thought. But the Bible does tell us that he said, I should be worshipped. Look at my beauty. Look how fabulous I am. Now, kids, he had not spoken one thing into existence, and all the angels had seen God speak everything into existence. And you know, the Bible tells us that one-third of the angels who had seen God create the world followed Satan. And God was merciful to Satan. God cast him down on this earth. Now, this earth was a beautiful place. And, of course, on this earth, there was mankind. But, you know, when Satan came down to this earth with mankind, all he wanted to do was destroy God's wonderful creation. And he wants to destroy you, too. And the way that he got to this first man and this first woman is the very way that he can get to you, too. He, oh, no, no, I wouldn't have fallen for it. Oh, yes, yes, you just wait and see. Well, so the Bible tells us, that the serpent, Satan was behind the serpent. He was more beautiful. He was more cunning than all of the other animals of the field. So Satan picked the most beautiful of all of the animals. And then the Bible says, as Eve was passing by, that he spoke to her. Well, you know what? Here she heard a serpent speak. But she didn't think anything strange. And because, you know, she was in that garden, and, and she didn't know everything that was happening, and it was an amazing, amazing place. And so the serpent said to her, uh, excuse me, miss, um, has uh, God said that uh, you can eat every tree of the garden? Certainly that everything you can eat, I mean, he's not withholding anything from you, is he? I mean, he's certainly giving you all of these fabulous trees to eat from. Now, of course, he knew that there was a tree that God did not want them to eat from. And the woman said to the serpent, oh, oh, yes, yes, we can eat from all of the trees of the garden, but, but there is one tree, yes, it's the tree of knowing good and evil. And, you know, God says that when we eat it or we touch it, we are going to die. Now, at that point, I know she didn't know what death even meant. But you know what? She said that. And then the serpent said, oh, um, no, no. You've got that wrong. No, when you eat that tree, you're not going to die. Uh-uh. No, that's not going to happen. For God knows, uh -huh. you know, he knows in the day that you eat of it, you will, your eyes will be opened. Oh, oh, now I understand. Oh, now I'm smarter. Now I'm wiser. And you will be like God. You see, God really doesn't want you to be like him, but he knows that when you eat of that tree, you will be like him. And you will then know the difference between good and evil. Do you know the only thing that he said there that was true, is that when they ate of that tree, they would then know good and evil. They didn't know evil up until this point. The only way they were going to know this evil is if they entered in and they disobeyed God. Now, you know, kids, I want to tell you something. God is your rightful ruler. And God says you can't eat of that tree. That was fair. It was right. And for God to put that tree in that garden, it was the right thing to do. God gave them a choice. I just talked to two young men. They didn't believe in God at all. And I said to them, I said, would you want God to tell you everything to do? And they said, no, we don't want to do what God wants us to do. 
we want a choice. Well, I got to tell you that after I talked to them, they, they wanted to read a wonderful book about God, and they really had changed their viewpoint on this. But you know what, kids? God has given man a choice. And so he gave man the choice. Will you obey my command? Will you follow me or won't you? Well, you know what, kids? Eve, she, the Bible tells us that she looked at the tree and she saw it was good for food. I don't know how she saw it was good for food. Was the Satan, the, the serpent eating it? Mm, 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 oh, this is so delicious. Mm, oh, I can't tell you how good this is. I don't know if he was. But she saw that it was good for food. And then she said it was pleasant to the eyes. Oh, that's, that's very beautiful to look at. Oh, that's just beautiful fruit. We don't know what kind of fruit it was. A lot of people say it was the apple. But we don't think it was the apple. Uh, and then it says, your eyes will be open. Oh, you'll be so much smarter and so much happier and so much wiser. And you will be like God. And you will know it. And she, she then thought, wow, should I or shouldn't I? You know what, kids? The Bible tells us she was tricked. She was deceived. Now, if you have someone come up to you and say, oh, it's okay. It, no, it's all right. Oh, God, God, God wouldn't mind if you did that. Certainly would he. I mean, he wants you to have fun, doesn't he? I mean, you're here to enjoy life, aren't you? And you have heard that it was wrong to do. And you then don't know, should I or shouldn't I? You know what you need to do? You need to say, um, could I get back to you? Let me go check. I'm going to go check with my pastor. I'm going to go check with my parents. I'm going to go check in God's word. Don't do it if you're not sure. Do you know what most kids want to do, though? They want to do it and just get in under the line. And, but we should not. I want to tell you something, kids. God's rules were right. They were good. They were for Eve's protection. But the Bible tells us that she saw. She didn't believe God. She thought, oh, well, maybe I got it wrong. And so she took that fruit and she ate of it. Now, you know, sometimes when you do things that you're not supposed to do, you think, oh, nothing's happened. Well, it's just the same as it was before. But a lot was going to happen. Sometimes when you start doing these things, oh, you know, if I just do this when I'm under stress and, and you take this little bit of stuff, I'm going to feel so much better. And maybe you do feel better. Maybe you don't feel the stress anymore. But what you don't know is the end. You don't know that it's going to destroy your life that is going to take away from you your brains. Sometimes kids will take these stuff and, and, you know, instead of passing out of their system, it goes to their skin and it makes these terrible, horrible sores. And they end up in prison. And they end up with wasted, ruined lives. That is what Satan never tells you in the beginning. Oh, you're going to feel good now. But oh, yeah, but what about even two to three to five to ten years from then? And so, but you know what? Eve took an aid of it. And then she did what many of us do. She went... And she found her friend, her very best friend. And she says, oh, look, I ate. It was delicious. Now, you know, kids, most children sin because of other people saying, come on, just do it. Oh, it's not going to hurt. Oh, you know, we can just smoke these cigarettes, or we can just take this stuff, or we can just drink that, or we can, we can go joyriding. They do it because they don't want to say no to those that are their friends. Can you see the look on Adam's face? Adam was not tricked like Eve. Adam knew that it was wrong. He knew that God had said, do not do it. But you know what? He had a choice now. The choice was, remember, he knew what life was without having someone that was flesh of his flesh. And you know, the Bible tells us that he had a choice. Was he going to do what God, the creator, his loving father who made him, or was he going to go with the woman that God had given him? Well, the Bible tells us that he made the wrong choice. And after they had eaten of the fruit, do you think that everything got better for them? The Bible tells us that all of a sudden they were afraid and they were ashamed. And so God comes down to walk and talk with them and they hide they hide from God. They don't want to see God. They felt guilty. They felt ashamed. And you know what? God says, Adam, Adam, where are you? And he says, did you eat from the tree that I told you not to eat from? Did God know that Adam had eaten from the tree? Yes, he did. God knows everything. But God wants us to confess our sin, to admit it ourselves. And then Adam, he did something that was very devastating to Eve. 
He blamed Eve. Now, I want to say something. If somebody asks you to do something that is wrong and you say yes, you can't blame them. They didn't force you. If you said yes, you are to blame. If your brother or sister comes in and they ask you to do something, you don't have to do it. You can say no. But if you say yes and your parents then punish you, that is right. You have said yes when you should have said no. Now, kids, I want to tell you that God said in the day that they should eat of it, they would surely die. But you know what? The Bible tells us that they went out of that garden and they Adam lived another 900 years. But when he ate of it, he died spiritually. To die means to be separated. He was now separated from God. That is why he hid from God. He didn't want to be friends with God. He didn't want to talk to God. And as long as we are in our sin, we don't want to talk to God. And then in the soul part of Adam, the Bible says that so many devastating things happened. It used to be they were at peace and they had perfect communion and, and they loved each other perfectly. Now he was blaming her. And now he says, God, the woman that you gave me, just like, whoa, you gave her to me. And she was standing there listening to that. And then the Bible says that God said to Eve, Eve, have you eaten of the tree? And so she blamed somebody else. But kids, when you say yes to sin, it doesn't matter who asks you. You are to blame. And the Bible says that she blamed, of course, the serpent. God didn't ask the serpent. God sent punishment upon Satan and upon, of course, even the serpent that uh, he had inhabited. And so the Bible tells us, though, that God had to do something because God says in the day you eat of it, you will die. I'm going to show you this next picture, and I want you to tell me what you think is different about this picture than the one you saw before. Do you see it? Do you see that Adam and Eve now have on the skins of animals? Do you know the only way that they could have on the skins of animals? If some little animal had to die. God says, and God's a righteous ruler, and all of his laws are just. When he gives a punishment, it's not too harsh. And so he says that when you sin, the wages of sin is death. And the only way your sin can be forgiven is with the shedding of blood. So there they were. They had done wrong. And so God then took these little sheep. We think it probably was sheep. It could have been another animal. And this little animal that was so cute and so perfect and so wonderful, God says, you know what? I'm not going to kill you. Uh, it's going to be your, the, the, these sheep will die and take your place. Because he says, I'm going to send someone to take the place of your punishment. I still love you. And so the Bible says that when those little sheep died, the sacrifice was offered, and God himself took the skins of those animals and made clothing for them. Now, they were very sad, I'm sure, to see those animals die. But you know what would have made them even sadder? Right then, God said that someone someday is going to come, and he's going to die and pay the punishment for your sins so you can be free. But the person that was talking to them, the one that walked and talked with them in the garden, that was the very one that was going to someday leave his home in heaven and come down, and he was going to die for their sin. If they would have known that at that time, it would have broken their hearts. But you see, Jesus always existed. He is the visible form the one you can see, the visible form of the invisible God. So if they were walking and talking with God, they were seeing it was the Lord Jesus. His name did not become Jesus until he took upon himself the body of a little baby and then grew up as a man. Before that, in the Old Testament, he would appear and disappear, and he appeared to them then. But you know, the Bible tells us that they had to leave that beautiful garden. There was a tree of life there. That tree of life is going to be in heaven. And there was something we don't really know for sure, but there's something in that tree that gave life. And God says, no, no, I'm not going to have you live forever in sin. Do you know what, guys? It's so such a wonderful grace and, and mercy to us that we will die. 
then we will go to heaven, and then we will live where it's perfect. We wouldn't want to live on this earth forever and ever on this sinful earth. And then God says, you cannot stay in the garden any longer. And so they were sent out of the garden, and there they had to work really hard. Do you know, um, a lot of you have fathers. Your father can work so hard to support your family and to make sure that you have clothes and food. And it's very, very hard. And your mother, the punishment he said for the woman, was that she would have pain in childbirth. And you know, God did not curse Adam. God cursed the ground. And God and Eve said you will have pain in childbirth. But you know, after your mother had you, you know what she had? She had this beautiful little baby that she loved so much. So there was a blessing there too. God still loved them. But you know, the Bible tells us that God, that God created Adam in his image. So Adam was created in the image of God. But you and I, we are born in the likeness of Adam. Now the truth about us is, we still bear the image of God in many, many ways. We can talk to God. We can communicate with God. But we are born with a want to, to sin. And you may say, oh, no, no, not me. I don't want to sin. But you know what sin is? Sin is not doing what God or people in authority over us have asked us to do. Did your mother ever say, oh, well, it's time to set the table. Could you come and set the table? Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm watching my video game or I'm talking on the phone or I am in the middle of a TV program. See, you don't want to do something that would help the family, help your mother. You want to do what you want to do. Maybe your little brother or sister says, can I play with this that's yours? Oh, oh no, no, I don't, I don't want you to do that. You, you, you might break it. And besides, I want to play with it now. See, we don't want to share and have others. We want it all for ourselves. And that's the definition of sin, is saying, God, I don't want to do what you want me to do. You know, if I do what you want me to do, I won't have as much fun. And I don't want anybody ruling over me just like these two young men. But I'm going to tell you something. God is your rightful ruler. And someday God is going to be the ruler of heaven and earth. He's going to make a new heaven and a new earth and restore it to the beauty that it once had and the perfectness that it had. But in the meantime, God is giving everyone a choice. Are you going to turn to me and let me be your rightful ruler? You know, I want to show you this wonderful verse. In fact, it is the most famous verse in all of the Bible. Now, we have been talking about the wonderful world that God has created. And so God made this world. But you know, man, on this world, we just learned that man turned his back on God. And he says, I don't want to do what you want me to do. And we say that today, too. Well, you know what? How does God feel about the world? Does he still care about the world? Well, you know, the Bible tells us that God still loves. It says, for God so loved the world even after it fell into sin and turned their backs and said, I don't want to do what you want me to do. And you know, kids, the Bible says that God had told them already, when you sin, then you will perish. Now, kids, I looked up the word perish. It means sudden destruction. You come to an untimely end. It's total devastation. God says, I don't want that for you. I made and created you to live in heaven with me. But we turn our back on God. And you know what, kids? On this earth, God allows us to live if we don't want to follow his righteous rules. But when he recreates heaven and earth, at that point, 
only those that want to follow God's righteous rules are the ones that are going to be able to live in heaven with him. And then God says that the punishment for your sin is death. Now, God made man in his image. And so, you know, kids, if we're made in God's image, for someone to take our place has to be someone that's worthy. If you do something wrong, you can't say, I'll send my dog to prison. No, that's an animal. They're not worthy. They're not the same as you. And so the Bible says that God, because he created us in his image, we are in the image of God, that God so loved the world that he had made that he sent his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to take the punishment for us. We deserve to die. He says, no, I will take your punishment. I will die in your place so you will not have to perish. So there will not be a sudden destruction and an end and a death. You will not die. I will die. You will not die. But you know what, kids? When Jesus Christ came and died on that cross, does for everybody? No. He says, for whoever believes. Whoever believes in him. Now, kids, I want to tell you something. We earn death because we have sinned. That's something we've earned. Oh, you know what? I earned that. Do you know what some people think they earn? They think, oh, I earned heaven. No, they don't because they're good. Do you know what? You have done bad things, but you cannot do enough good things to get into heaven. God is perfect. He's righteous. Every day that we break the righteous rules of God, that we say, oh, I don't want to be kind to my wife. I don't want to do this for somebody else. You know, I, it don't, we don't exactly tell the truth. We tell little lies. We're selfish. We want things our own way. That is sin. And God says that we can never earn, ever, ever, ever earn that for Christ to come and die on the cross for our sins. Oh, yes, we can earn to perish, but we can't earn that. And so God says, you know what? You can't earn it. So I'm going to give it to you as a gift. And you know what, though? With a gift, you don't have to receive a gift. There have been parents give their kids gifts of, I'll give you an education if you'll just study. I don't want to do that. They throw the gift away. So you know what? It's whoever accepts that gift, whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then God says, you will, you should not perish. You should not perish. There's not going to be sudden destruction that comes upon you. No. Instead, you are going to have, the Bible tells us, you put your faith and trust in him, you're going to have eternal life. Remember we said you'll either have eternal life or you'll be eternally separated. Do you know if you, whoever believes that Jesus Christ came and took their punishment and says, I receive that. And do you know what I want to do? I want to make you my rightful ruler. I want to start right now obeying the rightful rules that you have given. Now, you know, kids, we won't be able to obey them all. We don't get to go to heaven because we obey them. We don't do a very good job of it. We need to get better and better and better. God gives us his Holy Spirit inside of us to give us the power. At the same time, we need to take the responsibility to, to put off every sin that we know of. And, but at the same time, so it's, it's we have to do it, and yet he does it through us. And we need to make him our rightful ruler. And so it says, for God so loved the world that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That is how we can have that eternal life, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ that he was the only one that died for us. Now, the verse goes on to say, and this was for God. This is for God. Now, God sent his son into the world. Jesus came into the world, like I said before. He came in sometimes as a man, sometimes as the captain of the Lord's host, sometimes as an angel and talking to Abraham. He came in many ways. But at one point in history, God sent his son into the world as a little baby. Because at that point, he took upon himself the body of a man. And do you know when he took upon himself that body of a man, he will then exist forever and ever in heaven with a body. He, when he went back to heaven, 
he had a glorified body. So I'll tell you, these bodies that God made for us to live in are so fabulous and so wonderful that even he said, I will live in that body for the rest of my life. And you know what? The God, and then of course, sent his son into the world. He came into the world. Now kids, I want to tell you something. When we say to your Lord, please forgive me for my sin, then we're even. I'm clean. But Jesus, when he lived on this earth, he followed all the rightful rules. Oh yes, you did that right, and you did this right, and, and you never told a lie, and that was right, and you always worshipped me, and that was right, and you were always sharing with your brothers and sisters, and that was right, and you were always helpful to your mom, and that was right. So he has all these right things that he has done. And God says, not only am I going to take your sin away, I'm going to take the right things that Jesus did, and I'm going to put them in your bank account. When I look at you, I'm going to see them. And you say, oh, you did all of this. I, well, it really wasn't me, but it was the Lord. So, oh, I'm so glad you see them. Thank you so much. And he gives that to to us too and so but it says now God and, and this is interesting because it starts out he says God sent his son into the world but it's going to tell us the reason so it says God did not send his son into the world to do something he says I didn't send my son into the world to condemn the world you know the world was already perishing they also they had already sinned they had already met the sudden destruction and that was, that was what they were going to receive. Now, I want to say this. Someday, every person that has not put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and received his free gift of salvation, that they will stand before God as the judge. And he will condemn them because a judge condemns. He says, no, but I did not come to judge the world this time. The world was, was perishing. They needed saving. That's what they needed. They didn't need to be condemned. They were already condemned. So, you know what? I didn't come to condemn the world. I came as their savior. The next time I will be their judge. This time I came as their savior. I wanted to offer them the free gift that they could live forever in heaven and have this eternal life with me someday. And so it says that. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Now, a lot of this is about the world. You know, for God so loved the world. Now it says God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world... Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't want to condemn them. I didn't come for that reason. I came in order that those in the world might be, mm -hmm. now we're going to talk about that in a minute, might be exactly what they needed. They might be saved through Jesus. They needed to be saved from perishing. They were condemned. They needed to be saved from being condemned. And when he says, might be, God is offering to you. Do you want to accept my gift that I have forgiven your sins? And you want to make me your righteous ruler? Do you want to change your mind? You don't want to then want your own way, but you're willing to make God your righteous ruler. So it, whoever believes that he is the rightful ruler, whoever believes that he did die on the cross for their sin, whoever says, I want, I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to have eternal life in heaven with you. I am willing to make you my righteous ruler of my life. You know what? Then God says, you will be saved from perishing. You will be saved from being condemned. And you will be saved because Jesus took your punishment. You only hand out the punishment once, but if you reject it and say, oh, no, 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 I, I think I'm good enough. And God says, well, someday you're going to have to pay the punishment for your sin. And you know, this is found in the most popular and famous verse of the entire Bible, John 3.16. You know why it is the most famous verse of the entire Bible? Because it gives the plan that God's given. He says, I love you. You're going to perish. I don't want you to perish. I want you to have everlasting life. But you've got a problem. You're the one that sinned. You went against my righteous rules. So therefore, I'm giving the Lord Jesus. He's going to die in your place. He's going to pay the punishment for you. But you have to believe that he did it. You have to accept the gift that I have given. And you know what I want to tell you? I didn't send him to judge the world. No, no. you needed a savior. Someday you'll judge, but right now you needed a savior. And so in order that you might be saved, that's what I want for you. I want you to be saved. Oh, if you've never before said, oh, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this gift. Thank you that you took my punishment. 
Thank you that you still loved me even after I had turned away from you. You are my rightful ruler. You created and made the universe. I want you to rule over my heart and my life. I want to do that which you want me to do. And I accept your wonderful gift. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, kids, if you prayed that in your heart right now and you believe in the Lord Jesus, then he can be your rightful ruler. And now if you've, he'll give your Holy Spirit to come and live within you. Now you have to work out your salvation, the Bible says. You don't work to get saved, but when you have the salvation, you'll work it out. You're not, you start, you know, you will do things that are wrong, but, oh, I want to be better there. Lord, give me the power. Help me. Oh, I'm, I'm supposed to do this, and, you know, I live in your universe. I want to follow every one of your rightful rules. I pray that you do that today. I am so glad you joined us. Thank you. I will see you next time. I love you, and oh, God loves you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.